Hello fellow problem solvers. So today we're going to be doing a problem from the Junior Balkan Math Olympiad 2009 problem number three. This is a very good introductory algebra problem. You know, you've just worked on your basics of algebra and now you want to take it to actually working on some problems. This is a great problem for that. I suggest you try it out for a minimum of 15 minutes, ideally 45-ish to an hour, not more than two hours. If you'd like to go along with us, I'd, say, I'd first say this. This is not a supremely like technique heavy problem at all. Rather, it's meant to have you understand what is happening in a problem. And now, without further ado, if you take, take 10 minutes and try to you know, work with this, and now let's begin. So, if these numbers are between 0 and 1, so they're positive reals between 0 and 1, the product of x, y, and z is equal to the product of 1 minus each of these. And we'll show that at least one of these numbers is greater than or equal to a 4. Okay. So how are we going to do this? What does it mean for one of these numbers to be greater than or equal to a four? Well, if you think about it, if x is small, one over x is big. Small and big being used in this relative sense. If x is a fourth, then this number one minus x is three over four. And then you need y times z to like sort of catch up to the 3 over 4. And then if say y is 1 over 5, then you have z, then you have 1 minus y is 4 over 5, and then you have z over 20 needs to be equal to, what is it called, z over 20 is equal to 4 over 5 times 3 over 4, 3 over 5z, which actually may or may not be possible. I don't know, I'm just doing this in my head. But any, actually not perfectly well should be possible. Both of these numbers are between zero and one. But the point is, this doesn't seem to be easy. Like it, it seems to me that if you take x and y to be small, then 1 minus x and 1 minus y are big. And then z is also going to be big-ish. Another thing to notice here. If, say this is a triplet x, y, and z, which satisfies this inequality, which satisfies this relationship and this thing. Now, if instead of the triplet x, y, z, I put 1 minus x, 1 minus y, 1 minus z, I would still get the same thing that holds true. And I'd get, I wouldn't get the same things here. No, actually, would I I'd get one minus y times x? I wouldn't really get the same thing. But the thing would still need to hold true. So it's either this needs to hold true, but it's also we can also say like one minus x times z, one minus y times x, and then one minus z times y, one minus z times y. One of those also needs to be greater than or equal to a four. So how do we even begin this problem, right? I'm, as I said before, it's a non-technical problem. Well, one way to go about this is to say, okay, let's see what happens when I assume that all of them are in fact smaller than one over four. One minus y times z is more than one over four. One minus z times x is more than one over four. What do I get from this? Right, I'm assuming the contrary to see if I can get to some sort of contradiction. Now, what does this give me? And I invite you here, pause for five to 10 minutes and see if there's some way that you can use this fact, okay? That I hope that you've paused. And for me, one thing I'm seeing is if I multiply all of these together, inequalities which are positive, I can multiply. And then I get that when I multiply all these together, I get one minus x times one minus z, one minus y times one minus z, times x times y times z, is less than one over four to the power of three. However, one minus x, one minus y times one minus z is x, y, z. So I'll get an interesting relationship. I'll get when I multiply all of these inequalities together, right? 
So in the contrary, all of these inequalities are true. And then there's also a thing when you need to prove that one number out of these three, which sort of form together your problem condition, you need to prove one of them is greater than or equal to a fourth. Sometimes you're trying to say all of them together satisfy something and then by averaging it out or by combining that together, this is sort of like averaging it out in a very vague sense of that term. Don't, I'm not saying exactly averaging it out, but sometimes you're trying, sometimes that's how these things are formed. If you have one of three numbers satisfies that it's bigger than something, sometimes you can prove that it's exactly one specific number. But sometimes when you have so much symmetry with X, Y, and Z, like switching X and Y literally doesn't, it doesn't really change much. So when you have so much symmetry, it usually means that, not usually, but sometimes it can mean you're trying to take these things that are apart, put them together and get to a contradiction or gets to once you put them together that something must hold for at least one of them, right? And this is when you say at least one. That's sort of like the hint in problem solving of these types of problems. Anyway, let's multiply these together. And I'm going to like write x squared, y squared, z squared immediately. We get this is less than one over four cubed, which is equal to 60, one over 64. So we have x, y, z is less than one over eight. Okay. So now we know that x, y, z less than one over eight, which is also roughly, and it also means that one minus x, one minus y, y minus z is also less than one over eight. Now, what does this sort of tell you? Both of these things are true. However, it seems like roughly what's happening, like much if x, y, z is less than an eight, like these numbers are sort of, because x is one minus x, like you would expect, you know, one of them to be near a half or something like that. But here you get every single one of them is less than one over eight. It's, I don't know, it's, it seems whack. It seems a bit strange. Is there any way we can use these two facts now? We need to combine them in some way, shape or form. Or maybe we have multiplied things here. Maybe if we add them together, we get something else that's interesting. Maybe let's look at what this actually is equal to. Like you're trying to explore a different sort of options. What this is equal to is one minus x minus y minus z plus x, y plus y, z plus zx minus x, y, z is more than one over eight. Now a question is, do you see anything here connecting it to this here? Like this here is equal to y minus xy is equal to z minus zy x minus xz. Now, do these two things have any connection? And for me, the answer is well, here I'm getting y minus xy. So I get a fourth, minus a fourth is smaller than minus x plus what's it called xz right by switching the signs here and i'm using this because now i can estimate this with these things now i can say that this part here is less than for every single one of these cyclically i'm going to be used this to, actually this thing is greater than I'm going to have a one minus a fourth, minus a fourth, minus a fourth. And then we're going to have a minus X, Y, Z, right? This thing right here is less than one over eight. So in other words, I'm getting that this is going to be a fourth minus X, Y, Z is less than one over eight. Now, what does this mean? Well, it means that one over eight, which is a fourth minus an eight, 
is less than x times y times z. But I already have this. Now I have this, and this finishes up our inequality. Now, to be very honest with you, I did not solve this problem before making this video. And this was really me trying to see, sort of, okay, I need to use this fact somehow. And you see if I can combine them together. There are two ways to combine these things. One is to multiply through. And when you multiply them through, you get an estimate for this problem condition. On the other hand, I thought, wait a second, like this other thing is, gives me like mx minus xy. So it's actually xy minus x. And that's sort of thing cyclically. But this thing right here, I can estimate them individually and then add them up. And then I'm like trying to recombine two things in different ways to get to a contradiction. Now, mind you, it's a problem for you. It's not an easy problem. But this is sort of thinking and you're, the point here is not to showcase a technique. I don't know if I would call this any specific technique. I think for me, this would be more of an exploration and I'm trying stuff out. When you get something that holds true, that's nice aesthetically, and this is something that will develop over time as you solve more and more problems. When you see something that's aesthetically nice like this, which is to me aesthetically nicer than this, I remember that I'm thinking, maybe there's something I can do with this. And when you try to begin problems, a thing you want to try to do is to begin simply. Right? I could have here, I could have multiplied everything through and saw what the problem condition was. But I thought to myself, that's kind of yucky to me, right? To combine this and like once I multiply everything through, it seemed a bit, I don't know, I didn't want to do that. Now, truth be told, there's probably a way to finish up the problem by doing that as well. Because I think if we were to estimate this, and this is just coming up right now, is saying this is the same thing right here, and we would have x, y, z on one hand. Say we have two x, y, z here, and then we would have is equal to one minus all of these things, and we could actually show that this is actually greater than, so this thing is going to be greater than, instead of one minus x plus x, y, it's going to be greater than one minus a fourth, minus a fourth, minus a fourth, greater than one over four. And yeah, okay, and then, yeah, and here we, we would get that x, y, z is greater than one over eight. But for me personally, it's I first wanna see what I have, like this is I think an important sort of technique that you can get from this problem is this thing right here, how you begin this problem. And next is like, I'm setting it up as I'm trying to get a contradiction. And then everything else is me trying to manipulate this really the I have two express I have this expression and I have these inequalities. I'm trying to manipulate this in some way to give me a contradiction. And I'm finding a way to do that by having x, y, z be greater than one over eight on one hand and smaller than one over eight on the other. I think the smaller than one over eight for me was immediate because when I multiplied and through, I knew I would get to this thing. I get this times this, and then I can use that. But it goes to show like these types of problems, you want to try to begin simply. Usually for me, that's a heuristic, a rule of thumb I use is I try to begin simply and then move up to more like complex ideas because that can have, that can make it easier for you to keep track of what it is you're doing and how it is you're, whether you're using this idea or that idea. But it's usually easier when you're beginning with a problem to get comfortable with a problem to start off with some simple ideas. Now, this whole thing finishes up our problem. And as always, thanks for problem solving.